It seems like I finally figured out how Boruto and surprisingly Kawaki too got in touch with the cells of Shibai. All the mysteries from Boruto's horn resembling the Osusuki god to the awakening of Shibai's eye can now be solved. As we know from chapter 13, Boro was also modified with the cells of Shibai but he failed to awaken the Shinjutsu. Well, even though this revelation may seem irrelevant right now, something did happen in the past which connects all the dots too well. In the fight between Boro and Team 7, Mitsuki used his snake to absorb the blood from Boro's body just to create the antibodies of his virus. He then injected that blood into Boruto and Kawaki, making them immune to Boro's special power. But with the reveal of the cyborg possessing the DNA of Shibai, it can be concluded that those divine cells got transferred to Boruto and Kawaki as well. This means Mitsuki was the medium to implant Shibai cells in the body of his son, which explains a lot of things. Starting from the horn on Boroshiki's head, who made his debut minutes after this incident, I think we just figured out the true reason for Borushiki's horn to resemble Shibai instead of Momoshiki. The cells of Shibai that Mitsuki unknowingly transferred from Boro's body into Boruto must have resonated so well with him that he ended up having an appearance similar to Shibai in his Osusuki form. I really believe once Boruto awakens the most anticipated power, the Jogen, this setup would be used to explain how he awakened the Shinjutsu, even though he was never modified with Shibai's cells. Now here is something even more mind-blowing. Remember the resemblance between Mitsuki and Toneri and how everyone thought Orochimaru may have used the cells of the moon or Susuki to create them. Well, even though those theories didn't come true, I think we now know the true reason behind Mitsuki and Toneri's resemblance. In the anime, Toneri was the one to make a prophecy about the Jogun's awakening and its vital role in the faraway future. While in the manga canon content, Mitsuki was the one to lay the foundation for Jogun's awakening by implanting Boruto with Shibai's cells that he took from Boro. This means Mitsuki indirectly saved the world and he's himself not aware of this. But we shouldn't forget that even Kawaki was given the DNA of Boro, meaning that he could also tap into the Shinjutsu of Shibai. So maybe the bad Kawaki from the future was actually able to transcend his limits thanks to the cells of Shibai that Mitsuki implanted in him. But the greater good was done to Boruto, who would sooner or later awaken the power of Jogen, the dojutsu that he used to fight Kawaki when everything started to fall apart. If you are a long-term viewer of my channel, you must be knowing that Boruto's legacy was kinda inspired from Gonkoro Kagemasa, a famous warrior from Japanese history who lost one of his eyes during the Great Gosanen War of Japan but still continued to fight. And after thinking about it for a while, I think the exact time for Boruto's Jogun awakening has been cleverly foreshadowed. They first introduced a superhero in the story known as Kagemasa and then the real life legend of this name was revealed to have a lot of similarities with the main character. But the one detail that in my opinion was the biggest and could potentially be a hint for Boruto's Jogun awakening was the age of Kagemasa. He was 16 years of age and he lost one of his eyes in the war and Boruto at present is 15 years old. This means he could awaken the Jogun at the age of 16, around the time of the future destruction. The Kawaki fight seems to be at least a year away from now and looking at the Kagemasa foreshadowing, Boruto would fight his biggest battle at the age of 16 where he would have to give his best which is why he's seen with the Jogun in the future sequence. Now here's where it all gets interesting. It has been more than a year since True Blue Vortex started and surprisingly all the manga events since then have taken place the same day. Everything from Code's attack, Boruto's return, to Shinju's attack and the recent tragedy, everything happened the same day. This means for the story to complete a full year of events, there is still a long way to go. So we may not be getting to the point of destroyed Konoha any sooner, since a lot has been cooked in between, with most of the stuff being unpredictable. A mini time skip is also plausible, considering how far we are from the prologue sequence. Now let's talk about the benevolence of Shibai or Susuki and why he is protecting Boruto by divinely intervening in his life events. I think Shibai may be aware of all the people who possess his DNA and since Boruto's purpose was to save his planet, he gave him a plot armor type of power up by intervening in his destiny just to prevent his death. But this intervention only guarantees the safety of his own self and not the protection of his allies. So Boruto will remain alive till the very end of the story. It's even possible that everyone else would die and he would remain the last person alive. That's when he could meet the one who gave him the godly eye. But predicting that would be head cannon right now. So let's talk about the stuff that matters. How would the cells of Shibai shape the destiny of Boruto and Kawaki? Considering the Jogun to be a Shinjutsu, which it actually is, since Senringen also comes under the same category, Kawaki is also bound to unlock some divine ability directly from Shibai or Susuki. But the question remains, what could it be? In a recent video, I discussed the possibility of Kokugen belonging to Shibai and Jigen modifying himself with the same cells to unlock those powers. But assuming Amaro's take on the backstory of Kaguya and Ishiki was perfect, 
perfect. Then it won't make sense that Kawaki obtained his Kokugan from Shibai, cause he would have most likely obtained it from Ishiki, since he was modified with his Gama. This means some other divine ability of Shibai is about to be unlocked by Kawaki, but there is still a chance for Kokugan to actually be an outcome of Shibai's cells, no matter whether it was implanted by Mitsuki or Amado. I think so because Kawaki was able to use this Dojutsu independently of the Kama seal. He doesn't require the Kama to use his special eye, unlike Boruto, who got his Kama activated every time his Byakugan manifested. But even if the Kokugan comes from Shibai, Kawaki unlocking more of his powers is not out of question. I think so because Aida was able to unlock more than a single ability of the Osusuki god. So the same happening with Kawaki, where he would get his hand on another Shibai power is really high. The Kokugan would be his visual power, while the other ability would be something that he would manifest without any Dojutsu. Not to mention if Amado has implanted Shibai cells in Kawaki as a part of the Kara operation, then Mitsuki Snake must have doubled down the cells of Shibai in him, which increases the probability for him to awaken something big. A fun fact about Ishiki would be that he was apparently very close to achieving divinity, as the Kokugan might be an eye that an Osutsuki unlocks when he's about to reach godhood. I'm saying this because Shibai had it too. That's why this speculation makes so much sense. So Kawaki getting the divine spells implanted not once, but more than once, and the Osutsuki who gave him the karma being very close to becoming a god, only hints at him unlocking more divine powers. This explains the desperation of Ishiki to get revived and how he spent over centuries in patience for this endeavor. But Kawaki's journey may not involve patience, rather a bunch of self-realizations. I'm saying this because every time we have seen an on-screen awakening of a Shinjutsu, there was an outburst of emotions reflected by the user. For Kashin Koji, it was the realization that his role was over, and for Aida, it was the desperate need to help out Kawaki. And when Kawaki would undergo a similar feeling, it's very likely for him to awaken a new Shinjutsu. He has already been in a similar situation, where he regained the Kama seal, so something similar happening again is not out of question for many reasons. One thing is clear that he would definitely go through self-realizations sooner or later, mainly because of the powerlessness which has kept him binded from protecting the leaf and the Hokage. So just like how last time, Kawaki's awakening of the Kama saved the life of Naruto, the awakening of his new Shinjutsu will save him from falling into the trap of worthlessness. You must have noticed the outfit change that Kawaki has went through in the flash forward. This whole new dress code is full of symbolic meanings that many of you may have not taken note of. Firstly, his present attire, that was by the way foreshadowed in the very first cover art of the story, doesn't necessarily symbolize much about his character. It only reflects his life as the fortunate child who doesn't bother about anything as long as the person whom he loves has been preserved securely. In the very first chapter of Two Blue Vortex, he was shown to calmly gaze at the bodies of Naruto and Hinata in his timeless dimension. This gesture symbolizes his satisfaction of looking at his most precious people without the fear of getting them harmed. Even though the village is under huge trouble right now, it must not be affecting Kawaki that much, as deep down he knows the people he cares for the most are safe. In chapter 6 of the manga, he was caught off guard by Daemon's theory of him getting exposed by the Shinjus if they are actually searching for Naruto. But thankfully that didn't happen, but it must have certainly left a mark in Kawaki's heart. He must be doubting his power and the possibility of losing to these new enemies must be haunting him every night. That's how his most awaited character development journey will begin and he would obtain a new attire that he chooses himself to match his purpose and ideology. Right now his clothes may be the choice of Aida, but sooner or later he would follow the footsteps of a stubborn monk whom he used to hate the most. As they say you become what you hate. Kawaki's future outfit symbolizing Jigen's attire only shows the path where he's destined to end up. Just like how Jigen could go to all heights just to reach his goals, his vessel would walk down a similar path with like-minded ideologies. Like when he thought the shinobi world was not suitable for his beloved Hokage, he went on the mission to destroy it all. But looking at the power difference that he shares with Boruto at present, the realizations must have not just made him change his outfit and become more like Jigen, but it could also have awakened a Shinjutsu that actually amplified his power to a whole new degree. An omni power that I think the apostle of destruction could actually wield must be the creative force of cosmic order. In symbolic sense, the wheel represents the cosmic law or order that underpins the entire existence. And by turning the wheel, the Buddha is said to have set in motion a new era of spiritual awakening and understanding. So Kawaki gaining the Shinjutsu to physically change the state of the shinobi world, a power attributed to the divine, is a huge possibility. Find out how Buddha awakens his Shinjutsu in these videos and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing stuff. I will see you next time.